Hello everyone, I am Ilekya, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, Devan Yamal College for Women, Virupuram. So today our topic is Nernst Distribution Law. So first, the Nernst is the scientist of, he studied in 1891, he studied the distribution of solutes in different solu solvents. So here we go for the topic. So first we can get the two immiscible solvents of solvent A and solvent B. So these are the two immiscible solvents. In this immiscible solvents, we have to distribute the solute X. So in this distribution of solute, that should be in the immiscible solvents. Okay. So first, the uh, solute should be in the, uh, it should be in the constant temperature. Okay. So first that solvent A and solvent B, these are the two immiscible solvents. So at constant temperature, the solution, the solute is the distribution in the solvent A and solvent B in the same molecular state. That means that the solute is the same molecular level in the solvent A and solvent B and that should be in the constant temperature. So this is the Nernst distribution law or the, it's otherwise called a distribution law or partition law. So we have to denote like this in the C1 divided by C2 is equal to Kd. Here the C1 is the concentration of the solute in solvent A and C2 is the concentration of the solute in solvent B. Here the Kd is denoted as the distribution coefficient of this for distribution law. Then we have go for the limitations. There should be five limitations. The first one is the constant temperature. So we already know there should be in this system, it should be in the constant temperature. And the second one is the non-miscible solvents. That means the two immiscible solvents of the solvent A and solvent B, it should be in the non-miscible state or slightly maybe it should be uh, soluble. And the third one is the equilibrium concentration. That means the concentration of the solute in the two immiscible solvents, it should be the uh, established state. And the fourth point is the same molecular state. state. That means the solute it was distributed in solvent A and solvent B should be in the same molecular state of the solvent A and the solvent B. And fifth one is the dilute solution. That means the concentration of the solvents in solute is, is should be in the low. It, that should not be in the high concentration level. So these are the limitations of the Nernst distribution law. Then we can go for the derivation of the Nernst distribution law. So the first one is we have considered the two immiscible solvents of carbon tetrachloride in between the water and we have considered as the iodine is the solute. So when the two immiscible solvents of water with that carbon tetrachloride, so the carbon tetrachloride we have denoted as the solvent A and uh, water is the solvent B. So in this chemical potential, we have to derive this Nernst distribution law. So we already know mu is the uh, chemical potential. So we have to derive in, in this manner, mu1 is equal to mu1 dot plus RT ln A. So here that A1 and A2 is the activity of the concentrations. So mu2 is mu2 is equal to mu2 dot plus RT ln A2. So here the mu1 is the, uh, the concentration of the solute in carbon tetrachloride and mu2 is the water in the solute. So here that uh, equilibrium is, the mu1 is equal to mu2, that means the equilibrium to the two immiscible solvents, we have to denote like this, mu1 is equal to mu2. So here that uh, dot it mentions for the standard chemical potential. So when we have to equilibrium to the mu1 is equal to mu2, we have to return like this, mu1 dot plus RT ln A is equal to mu2 dot plus RT ln A2. So we have already known it was in the multiplication. So when we go to the right side, it will get for the divided. And this was in the this was in the addition. So when we goes to the right side, it should be in the subtraction. So ln a1 divided by a2 is equal to mu2 dot minus mu1 dot divided by rt. Okay, we will finally we will get like this. So when we denoted that uh, chemical, the standard chemical potentials are constant, we have tried to the ln a1 divided by a2 is equal to constant. That means it will be get zero. So finally we will get that ln a1 divided by a2 is equal to constant. Or otherwise we can return as a1 divided by a2 is equal to constant. 
and finally the activity normally is equal to the concentration of the solution so we can write that a1 divided by a2 is equal to c1 divided by c2 so finally we will get the nernst distribution law derivation is equal to that um, distribution coefficient of that so finally we get the derivation of that c1 divided by c2 is equal to kd thank you ulaga tharamana kalluri ungalloori devana yamal college for women autonomous bilipuram ungal edirkalam ungal kaiyil